Greetings again today in the name of Jesus Christ, our wonderful Lord and Savior. Now we're glad to see you here in the auditorium of the Northside Baptist Church today. We welcome every one of you. We appreciate the visitors that's visiting with us today. Of course, always glad to see our own members. and appreciate you being in the house of the Lord. And to you out in the radio listening audience, we will certainly appreciate you tuning in to the Northside Baptist Church Hour that's coming to you live right from the auditorium of the Northside Baptist Church here in Athens, Georgia. Now, this is Preacher Edward speaking, and we're hoping during the next hour we can be an inspiration to you. And if you call a friend, you in the radio listening audience, call a friend, have them to tune in and get this hour. We'll try to be a blessing to them, and especially a shut-in. If you have your Bible, I want you to turn to the book of Jonah, chapter 2. If you have the original Scofield reference Bible, You'll find it on page 944. Now the singing, and of course the message is on cassette tape today, and would be available. And while you're turning to Jonah chapter 2, I want to say to you in the radio listening audience, if you're not getting our daily broadcast, you're tuned to this station where you're now listening. At 12 o'clock noon each day, Monday through Saturday, you can get the daily broadcast. We're taping all of our Sunday morning services. They're available on cassette tape. I'm going to speak today about a man that went to a saved person's hell. You may say, now preach Edwards, you mean to tell me there's a saved person's hell where saved people go? That's exactly right. If you don't live and act like you ought to as God's child, you could go to a saved person's hell. Now I'm not talking about hell down in the bowels of the earth where sinners go that die without God. I'm not talking about that. No saved person will ever enter hell down in the bowels of this earth nor go to the lake of fire. But as a saved person's hell where saved people go because of their disobedience to God. And it may be some of you have already been through a saved person's hell because of your disobedience. There may be some of you in a saved person's hell today there may be some that's headed in that direction. And if this message can help, then we'll give God the glory. Jonah chapter 2. Then Jonah prayed unto the Lord his God out of the fish's belly. And said, I cried by reason of mine affliction unto the Lord. And he heard me. Out of the belly of hell cried I. And thou heardest my voice. Thou hast cast me into the deep in the midst of the seas. And the floods compass me about. All thy billows and thy ways pass over me. Then I said, I am cast out of thy sight. Yet will I look again toward thy holy temple. The waters compass me about, even to the soul. The depths close me round about. The weeds were wrapped about my head. I went down to the bottoms of the mountains. The earth with her bars was about me forever. Yet as I brought up my life from corruption... O Lord, my God, when my soul fainted within me, I remembered the Lord, and my prayer came in unto thee into thine holy temple. They that observe lying vanities forsake their own mercy. But I will sacrifice unto thee with the voice of thanksgiving. I will pay that that I have vowed. Salvation is of the Lord. And the Lord spake unto the fish, and it vomited out Jonah upon dry land. I want you to take another look at verse 2. And said, I cried, but reason of mine affliction unto the Lord. And he heard me out of the belly of hell, cried I. And thou here heardest my voice. Now Jonah here is one person that experienced what I'm talking about today. There's been many others. And Jonah admitted that he was crying out of the belly of hell. Jonah was down in the belly of this whale. And he called that the belly of hell. And he was there because of his disobedience to God. And I'm bringing the message today to help us to keep us out of a, a saved person's hell. That's why Jonah went. That's why others went. And of course they came out. Many people come out. Many people even die in a saved person's hell. I'm talking about saved people now. I'm not talking about lost people. There are several things I want to say about Jonah. And then we're going to find out what really happened to him. We find four chapters here in the book of Jonah. 
In chapter 1, we find Jonah running from God. In chapter 2, we find Jonah running to God. In chapter 3, Jonah is running with God. In chapter 4, Jonah is running ahead of God. And I'll explain this as we move along in the message. Not only did Jonah, a great man of God, find himself in a saved person's hell, but Jonah is a beautiful type. He's a type of the nation of Israel and he's a type of Jesus. Let me briefly make mention of these types and then we're going to show you what happened to a man that went to a saved person's hell. Now Jonah, first of all, is a type of the nation of Israel. You keep that in mind. We know the Bible tells us the article of God came to the Jews first and then to the Gentiles. That's Romans chapter 3 and verse 2. So God spoke to Jonah, a Jew first, and then through him, God spoke to the Ninevites, the Gentiles. Number two, Jonah was disobedient. So was the nation of Israel, a disobedient nation. Number three, Jonah was cast into the sea. So was Israel cast into the sea of Gentiles. Number four, Jonah was pursued by a storm. So have the Jews been pursued by a storm of persecution over the years. Number five, Jonah was swallowed up by a fish. So was the nation of Israel swallowed up by the Gentile nation. Number six, Jonah was preserved in the fish. So have the Jews been preserved among the nations where they have been scattered. They have always maintained their identity. A Jew is a Jew regardless of where he is, whether it be in Germany, Russia, or England, America, or whatnot. And number seven, Jonah was cast out of the fish. So is Israel being cast out of the nation. And they'll be saved in a day and turned back to God in that respect. Number eight, Jonah was recommissioned. So will Israel be recommissioned when the king of kings come back to set up his kingdom upon the earth. Number nine, Jonah joined a merchant ship. So have the Jews been very prosperous in this field today. Most Jews can make more money accidentally than the average Gentile can on purpose. Now the reason for that, God called that Jew to be a witness. And instead of being a witness for God as God called him to do so, he turned around and began to use that talent and that ability to make money. And for the past 2,000 years, instead of witnessing for God, he began to make money for himself using that talent and that ability. You'd be surprised how much involved the Jews are in the money chain of America. And so you'd be surprised how many millionaires are Jews today. They just seem to know how to get it done. And they do. They use the God-given ability and God-given witness that God gave them to witness for Him to make money for themselves. And they're doing that very thing today. So in this sense, we find that Jonah is a type of the nation of Israel. Then we find Jonah to be a type of Jesus Christ in many ways. Jonah was sent on a great mission. So did Jesus come on a great mission. The Bible said He came to seek and to save that which is lost. Jonah voluntarily gave himself up to save those on the ship. Jesus voluntarily gave himself up on the cross to save us from an eternal hell. He said, no man taketh my life, I lay it down and might take it up again. Number three, Jonah was preserved in the fish's belly three days and three nights. So was Jesus in the grave three days and three nights, exactly 72 hours. He was crucified on Wednesday afternoon. He is buried at 6 o'clock on Wednesday evening. He stayed in the grave three days and three nights. He was there Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. He was there Wednesday night, Thursday night, and Friday night. He came out of the grave at 6 o'clock on Saturday evening at the end of the Sabbath, at the beginning of the Lord's day. And so as Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly of the whale, so was Jesus three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. The Bible tells you that. Just as plain as your nose on your face. Number four, Jonah had a great resurrection. So did Jesus have a great resurrection. That fish dumped him out, which is a type of the resurrection. And Jesus came up out of that grave by the power of the Holy Ghost. Number five, Jonah had a grave prepared for him in the belly of the whale. The Bible said God prepared a great fish to swallow up Jonah, and he did. That was his grave temporarily. And Jesus had a grave prophesied for him among the wicked and among the rich. Isaiah chapter 53 and verse 9. Number 6, Jonah was a Jew bringing a message to the Gentiles. So was Jesus born of a Jew and brought a great message 
as well to the Gentiles. That's why you're saved today and why I'm saved. In that sense, Jonah was a type of Jesus Christ. Now I want to blaze away a few thoughts at you today from these four chapters, only hitting the high points and pointing out some things that we need to see. So I'm going to move along quickly and you listen to what I have to say. In chapter 1, we find Jonah running from God. The man that went to save persons hell running from God. That's not exactly why he was sent to a saved person's hell because he was disobedient. He ran from God. The Bible says in verse 1 of chapter 1, Now the word of the Lord came unto Jonah. God called him to preach. God said, Jonah, I want you to go and deliver the message I've given you to the Ninevites. Now Jonah hated those Ninevites because they were Assyrians and the Jews hated the Assyrians. They, they wouldn't care if they all went to hell. And he disliked them. He did not want to go there. The word of the Lord came to him, telling him to go, but he would not. He tried to flee from the very presence of the Lord. Verse 2, the Bible said Jonah rose up to flee. Three times it's recorded that he tried to get away from the very presence of the Lord. There in the book of Jonah. Three times he tried to do that. It's recorded three times he tried to get away from the presence of God, and that cannot be done. A lot of people try to leave their town, their community, I'll maybe leave their church, um, change their jobs and go to another state and say, well, I'm going to get away from God. You can't get away from God. If you are backslidden, you try to run from God, you can't do it. You absolutely cannot get away from God. So there's only one thing to do, and that is do exactly what you know God wants you to do. If you don't, you're headed for a saved person's hell. Then we find the devil had a ship waiting for him in verse 3. He found a ship going to Tarsus. Now remember this, the ready way is not always God's way. I've had a lot of people say, well, I know it's the will of God because step by step everything worked out just fine and it, and it must have been the will of God. Don't forget, the devil can have a ready way and the devil can make things work out mighty good for you to look mighty good to get you away from God. A lot of people have left God and left their church and left where God wanted them because everything looked good in a different direction. And they set out to try to prove that they were right and the church is wrong where they left. And they say, this must be the will of God. Everything's working out fine. Not so every time. Jonah thought, well, maybe this is a, a good deal after all. There's a ship already waiting for me to go to Tarsus. He wanted to go to Tarsus. And he began to reason how providential. He said, this is and everything's working out fine. But remember, the ready way is not always God's way. You must keep that in mind. Now, Jonah paid the fare. He paid the fare, and when he paid the fare, he went down. Now, if you are born again, believe, I don't care who you are. If you disobey God, if you fail to do what you know God wants you to do, there's a day coming when you are going to pay that fare. And when you pay that fare, it's going to cost you. I don't care who you are, it's going to cost you greatly when time comes for you to pay the fare. Now, Jonah paid the fare, and when he did, he went down. The Bible said he went down to Joppa. He went down into the ship. He went down into the sleeping room. He went down into the fish. He went down to the bottom of the sea. And he went down on his face before God. Six major steps Jonah took when he paid the fare. Down, 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 down he went until he hit rock bottom. And the only way he could look was up. Maybe some of you have been right there. You've gone as far down as you felt like you could go without dying. And the only way that you could do is to look up. The only thing you could do is to look up. And when you looked up, God began to lift you up. Now there's a lot of church members today that's heady, hearted, and high-minded, disobedient to God, very arrogant, have all the answers. They are headed down, 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 down. And they will eventually hit bottom and end up in a saved person's hell. That's exactly what this man did. He went straight down to a saved person's hell. He went as far down as he could go. I may be speaking to someone now out of the radio listening audience. You have been saved. You have been born again. And you know you have been saved, but you are disobedient. How long has it been since you've been in God's house? How long has it been since you had your family in church? Oh, you say, preach Edwards, I'm saved, but it's been a good while now since I've been in church and served God. All right, go ahead, buddy. One of these days you're going to hit bottom. And one of these days you're going to end up in a saved person's hell. And when you do... You wish a thousand times you had obeyed God. Poor old Jonah. He wished a thousand times 
that he'd have gone on to Nineveh. They was down there in a saved person's hell. You can't disobey God, fail to be faithful to God, fail to do what God wants you to do, and expect God's blessings upon you. So in chapter 1, Jonah's running from God. In chapter 2, when God began to deal with him, he started running back to God. The Bible says in verse 2 of chapter 2, he found himself in a good man's hell. And when he did, he began to pray. That's the only thing you can do when you find out that you're in a good man's hell or saved person's hell is to pray. That's all. you got to do that. You must repent and pray. The Bible says in verses 1 and 2, Then Jonah prayed unto the Lord, his God out of the fish's belly. I cried, bereaved the mind affliction unto the Lord. Now this prayer here that Jonah prayed is quoted from nine of the Psalms. He prayed a prayer quoting from nine of the Psalms. He was biblical in his prayer and he was calling on God. And not only did he pray to the Lord, but he began to think about the old church. Look at verse 4. I will look again toward thy holy temple. Many times I have gone to the hospital, visited backslidden church members. They have said to me, Preacher Edwards, I have been thinking about the church since I've been here. And when I get out of here, I'm coming back to church. Many times have I heard that. Some have come back. Some have gone on hard-headed and stubborn. God had to really cut them off or deal with them. But whenever you're saved and you go back on God, you wind up in the hospital. If you're a saved person, you begin to think about the church house. You begin to think about the things of God. There may be some of you right now in the hospital. Listen to me right now on your bed. You're flat on your back and you're there because you disobeyed God and you're going to have to get right with God and repent and come back to God. And you're saying right now, I would to God, I could be in God's house today. Well, maybe if you'd obeyed God, you could have been. You've been unfaithful. You haven't been faithful in serving God. You haven't been faithful in tithing your income. You haven't been faithful in witnessing and praying and reading your Bible. And if you'd have been faithful to God, you might not be in a saved person's hell today. That's why Jonah was in a saved person's hell. And he promised then... Then he remembered, he remembered the temple there in verse 4. And no doubt he said, if I ever get out of this fish's belly, I'll go to the temple the first chance I get and I'll worship God. And then he promised to be thankful and pay his vows, verse 9. But I will sacrifice unto thee with the voice of thanksgiving. I'll pay that that I have vowed. I don't know what Jonah vowed, but he made a vow to God. I have an idea. I believe he did what every preacher does when God calls him to preach. I know I did. When God called me to preach, I said, Lord, I'll go where you want me to go. I'll preach what you want me to preach. I'll do what you want me to do. Just, just name it, Lord. Just lead me and I'll go. Well, I've tried to be obedient in that respect. And I believe that Jonah promised God when God called him to preach, he said, Lord, I don't care where it is, I'll preach. You just name it, Lord. I'll be there. You just tell me where you want me to go and I'll go. And then all of a sudden God said, now, Jonah, I want you to go to Nineveh. And Jonah said, everywhere, Lord, but Nineveh. I'll go anywhere, Lord, but Nineveh. God said, yes, I want you to go to Nineveh. And Jonah said, I'll go anywhere but to Nineveh. But did he go? He surely did. And he was glad to go when God finished with him. When he came out of a saved person's hell. And preachers make that vow to God when God calls them to preach as a general rule. And if they don't stick to that, they may end up in a saved person's hell. And he said, then I'll sacrifice the sacrifice that I promise. I'll pay the vow I have vowed. If you have made some vows to God, you better carry them out. You better do what you vowed God to do. The Bible says it's not it's better not to make a vow than to make it and break it. And whatever that vow is, then you carry that vow out. And then number five, he remembered that salvation is of the Lord. Salvation is entirely of God. There's a man down there in a saved person's hell, down at the bottom of the sea in the belly of a whale, and he knows if he gets out of that whale, God Almighty will have to deliver him. He knows that. So salvation is entirely of God. You didn't save yourself. Nobody can save himself. If God don't save you, you go to hell, as certain as you listen to me today. But God will save you if you repent and believe. Repent and believe and God will save you. Now salvation is the Lord in its origination. Salvation is of God in its application. Salvation is of God in its effectuation. Salvation is of God in its consummation. Salvation is entirely of the Lord. If you are saved, God will save you, and that's the only way you can be saved. But you must repent and believe to get that done. And he remembered salvation is the Lord. And when he remembered that, the fish disgorged him in verse 10, and he hit the dry ground. But he had to admit that only God could get him out of a saved person's hell, and God is the only one who can get you out of a saved person's hell if you're in one today. 
Then we come to chapter 3 and we find Jonah running with God. Now God gave Jonah here a second chance. I'm glad about that. Verse 1 of chapter 3. And the word of the Lord came unto Jonah the second time. You know I'm glad today we have a God to give us a second chance. Most of us foul up and make mistakes. And if we'll be honest and sincere and come to God and ask God, He'll give us another chance. God will give us a second chance. God gave Simon Peter a second chance. God gave David a second chance. God gave Jonah a second chance. And God will give you another chance if you mean business, if you really ask God to do so. And so he came running with God here. God gave him a second chance. And there he um, accepted that second chance and he made a three days journey in one. Verses three and four. Now this man Jonah, when he came out of that fish's belly, he might have smelled like a can of sardines, but he was headed with God's message to Nineveh. If someone had come along and uh, in a bottle of food and tooted their horn and said, Hey there, preacher, would you like a ride? He said, No, thank you. I'm in a hurry. And down the road he'd have gone. You could play marbles on his shirt tail. He's moving so fast. This man was headed toward Nineveh because he had been in a saved person's hell. He's got out now and he most certainly didn't want to go back there again. And on the way to Nineveh he went. He made a three days journey in one and he preached the message God told him to preach. Now God said, Jonah, I want you to go to Nineveh. And when you go there, I want you to preach on repentance. I want you to go from one street corner to another and preach on repentance. Now this man Jonah came running into Nineveh. And he stopped on the street corner. And he raised his voice. He said, yeah, 40 days. God's going to destroy this place if you don't repent. They could tell by the look in his eye, by the tone of his voice, that this man meant business. No foolishness about him. He didn't stand there and quote a lot of poetry to them and tell them a lot of jokes and tickle their ears and scratch their back. That man was crying aloud. He said, if you don't repent, God's going to destroy you, every one of you. He ran down to another street corner and he yelled out, if you don't repent, God is going to destroy you. God's judgment is coming to Nineveh. And they believe the man of God. They believe every word he said. They didn't argue about it. This man had God's message. This man was God's man. He had been delivered from a saved person's hell and he meant business with God. You know it's awful that God has to send some to a saved person's hell before they really get out of business. But when they get out of there, they get out of business. It takes some of them a long time to get out, but sometimes they get out and mean business with God. Now he went on and preached what he should have preached in the beginning. Had he done that in the beginning, he would not have spent three days and three nights in fish college there in the bottom of the sea. But he wouldn't do it. God had to send him to school. He had a postgraduate course in the fish college there. Three days and three nights. Came out with his degree and he was ready to go, brother. He went to a saved person's hell and spent three days and three nights in a fish's stomach, a whale's belly, down in the bottom of the sea. And when he got out, the Bible says in verse 5, when he went to Nineveh and began to preach, they could tell him it business and the Bible said they believed God. Those people there in Nineveh believed God. They didn't doubt. They didn't question Him. They didn't argue. They didn't say, well, I think maybe you have the wrong translation. I, I doubt that you mean business. No, no, no. They listened with both ears wide open and they believed God. There's a, a national known evangelist today that's traveling around. Very gracious man, Dr. Fred Garland. Most of you know him. Back in the early years of his ministry, he was unsettled about the matter of his salvation. He was miserable. He even tried to preach before he was ever saved. He got disturbed about it. And then he got right with God. And, and he had these doubts. And he, he just, uh, it worried him. He couldn't get settled. And he tried everything he could seemingly to get settled about it. But he prayed. He read his Bible. And finally became desperate. And uh, he said, now Lord, I got to have some relief. I can't go on like this. I must have some relief. I got to know that I'm saved. I got to know you, will, Lord, and I want you to help me. And he said, God, please help me. He said, I'm going to take my Bible, Lord, and, and I'm going to open it up just like this, and I'm going to let it fall open. And Lord, I want you to quicken a verse of Scripture to me that will deliver me and help me. And so he prayed, and he closed his Bible, and let it fall open. And you know where it fell open? At Jonah chapter 3. And the devil said to him immediately, said, well, that's nothing in that chapter can help you, see. Uh, God's not going to come to your rescue. There's nothing there for you, uh, uh, Mr. Garland. And so he looked down at Jonah chapter 3 and verse 5 just seemed to jump out at him. 
And in verse 5 it says the people of Nineveh believe God. Why well, he said praise God. That's been my trouble all the time. I haven't believed God. I haven't believed the word of God. I haven't believed, believed the promise of God. And the people of Nineveh believed God and that was it. He said Lord forgive me of my doubting. Forgive me God. I'm going to believe you from here on in. I'm going to believe what you said in this book. I'm going to believe every word of it. I'm not going to doubt anymore. Thank you, Lord, for deliverance. And God delivered that man at that very moment, and he's been happy in the Lord ever since. Dear people, listen to me. The Bible said the people in Nineveh believed God. Do you believe the word of God? The people in Nineveh believe God. That's the secret. You've got to believe the Lord. You can't doubt God. You can't play around about this matter of believing, expect to get anywhere. you got to believe what God said in this book. And then the Bible said when he preached, they proclaimed a fast from the White House to the Dog House. While the old king said everything's going to fast around here, men and women, boys and girls, cats and dogs and chickens and hogs, everything's going on a fast. And the Bible says in verse 7, Let neither man nor beast, herd nor flock, taste anything. Let them not feed nor drink water. The old king said, Don't you feed your cats. Don't even feed your dogs. Don't feed your birds. Don't feed your cows. Everybody's going on a fast. Fowl and man and animal. They're all going on a fast. This preacher means business. This preacher is telling us the truth. we got to repent. And they fasted. And they repented. They cried to God in verse 8. The Bible said they cried mightily unto God. Yea, let them turn everyone from his evil way. They cried to God. They repented. They said, God, we're sorry we sinned. Forgive us, O God. We don't want to die. Forgive us, O God. We want to believe in you. And they believed in God. The Bible said the people in Nineveh believe the Lord. Now let's move on to chapter 4. In chapter 4, we find Jonah running ahead of God. Now you've been saying a preacher was how could he do that? He ran, uh, he ran from God, he ran to God, he ran with God, but he runs ahead of God now. In verse 3 of chapter 4, Therefore now, Lord, take out beseech thee my life from me, for it's better for me to die than to live. Here's a man running ahead of God wanting to die. Now God will let you die when he gets ready for you to die. No point in you trying to commit suicide. No point in you praying to die. God will help you. At that particular time, God will be there. In due time, you'll die. And you may die before God gets ready for you to die if you're not obedient to God. Now, Jonah prayed to die. And God said, now listen here, Jonah. I got your life in my hands. And when I get ready for you to die, I'll take care of that. You don't have to be praying to die. And poor old Jonah sitting there beside that mountain. He so hated those Ninevites. I'd he'd rather die than to see them live. He said, God, just let me die. Nothing. Seem to be going right anymore anyway. And he sat down there beside that mountain. And God used four things to teach this Baptist preacher a lesson. Now we found old Jonah sitting there pouting. You ever seen anybody pout? You have. All right, have you ever seen uh, a Baptist preacher pout? Have you ever seen deacons pout? Have you ever seen your husband pout? Don't raise your hand. Have you ever seen your wife pout? Don't raise your hand. Just keep your hands down. I'm just asking you some questions. You have the answer. Have you ever seen anybody pout? That's a terrible looking sight. I used to pout with my wife, you know. And she said, I'd rather you just give me a whipping than, than to pout with me. Of course, I wouldn't do that. I'd rather pout. And so one day I was sitting in our living room down here in the parsonage. I was sitting there pouting about something. Had my lips all run out and all frowned up. And my wife said to my daughter, Joan, Said, uh, I want you to take a camera in there and take your daddy's picture. Don't let him see. Slip in there and get him. And she came tipping in there. And I ought to give a whooping for it, but it didn't. But she came in there and she struck my picture. And when I saw that thing, that broke me with my pout. And I haven't pouted anymore. Lord, have mercy. If you'd go get you a mirror when you're pouting and look at it real good, I'll get somebody to take you a picture, then that'd stop your pouting. A lot of you men walk around and speak to your wife, walk around, walk around, and and won't spend your pouch, you know. Somebody will take your picture right then and there. A lot of you wives pout with your husband. You pout and they come in from work. You won't speak to them and won't say anything. And walk around and pout. Shame on you. That's childish stuff. Get somebody to take your picture. That'll settle that. That broke me and broke me good. Now Jonah was sitting there pouting. And God taught him a lesson. God used four things to teach him a lesson. Number one, God used a fish. 
Poor old Jonah spent uh, three days in fish college. And he came out, he smelled like a barrel of, uh, can of sardines. That man, uh, he smelled like a fish, brother. But he had God with him. God used the fish. And then when he sat down beside of this mountain, God used a strong east wind. You know, when you're not feeling good and in pretty bad humor when you're pouting, by one of the worst things that happen to you is a strong east wind start blowing on you with a little misty rain in it. That makes it a lot worse. And he said, then the east wind got him. And then God said, all right, I'll just let a gourd vine grow up over this pouting Baptist. That's how I know it's a Baptist, he's pouting. And God let the gourd vine grow up over him. And old Jonah said, boy, got him made at last. Said, this is wonderful. I can sit here under the shade and enjoy life and watch over and enter and see what happens down there. There's a little old worm over there looking at that Baptist preacher. And God said to that little old worm, he said, uh, you see that Baptist preacher there pouting? Worm said, yes, sir. God said, I want you to take your saw and I want you to go over and saw that gourd vine right down, right smack dab on top of his head. And that little old worm was more obedient than that preacher. And he went over there and he took his saw and he began to saw that gourd vine. Man, he's going in town. He's doing it because God told him to. He's obeying the Lord. He's doing something for God. He's about ready to cut a vine down on the head of a pouting Baptist preacher. Man, he was going to town with that saw. And he saw that vine down. That thing tumbled out on top of Jonah's head. And that made Jonah mad. And God said, Jonah, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. Here you are now, disgusted and angry because that gourd vine's been cut out. And you're not concerned about all those people down there in Nineveh. Hundreds of them don't know their right hand from the left. Women and children. And you want to see them die. You'd like for them to be killed. You'd like me to drop the atomic bomb on them. And yet you're concerned about a little gourd vine being cut out. Said you ought to be ashamed of yourself, preacher. And God used that little worm to cut that gourd vine down upon Jonah. And there God taught him a lesson. I could mention several people today, but I don't have time, that I could use as an illustration that's absolutely gone to a saved person's hell. And many of them came out and some God took them on out of the world because they wouldn't straighten out. And you don't have to go to a saved person's hell. But if you're not doing what God wants you to do, you may eventually wind up there. And you remember what this Baptist preacher is telling you when you end up there, you're going to say, yes, Preacher Edwards told me that I might go to a good man's, a saved person's hell. And that's exactly where God puts saved people that don't do what they should. Sinners go to a devil's hell, a lost place, down there prepared for the devil's angels in the heart of this earth. But saved people, God prepares a saved person's hell. It may be financial difficulties. It may be a hospital. It may be uh, something else come your way to bring you to your knees because of your disobedience, but God knows how to bring his children to a saved person's hell to straighten them out. God help you today. You've listened well. Let's stand to our feet. Our Father, I pray today that you'll take the message, that you'll use it, that you'll speak to hearts, that your name might be honored, that Jesus might be glorified. Have your way, Father, this invitation. Help thy people that they end up not in a saved person's hell but be obedient to thee in serving thee. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Now Debbie's going to play for us. And while she's playing, if you're here today and you are in, ended up in a saved person's hell, or you're backslidden on God, or you're unsaved, or you want to join the church, or if God is speaking to you about any reason, you ought to come forward while she plays. How about it? If God is speaking to you, will you come? We'd like to help you if we can. If you're not saved, you're backslidden on God, and for any reason you want to join this church, would you come?